Enemy number three, the old favourite, the devil. The third great enemy of the spiritual life is Satan himself. We know from scripture that Satan's, pride, uh, Satan's downfall was pride. That's described for us and, and unpacked for us particularly in the book of Timothy. You see, Satan would like to have ruled. He would like to have ruled even in the heavenlies instead of God. In fact, he wants to replace God. He couldn't do it there, so he wants to replace it in here, in your lives. In order to accomplish this end, he would like to keep you, he would like to keep everyone from knowing the Lord, but also those who do know the Lord, you and I, he wants to stop us getting close to him, and he wants to stop you serving him. Satan's drive is to destroy every single believer's walk with the Lord, and he'll use any and every strategy to do this. Peter helpfully compared the devil to being like a roaming lion, roaming around seeking that which he might devour and destroy. And he'll do it any way he can. He'll tempt you with pride, 1 Timothy 3 verse 6. He'll try and get you to be hypocritical, to say one thing and do another, Acts 5 verses 1 to 4. He'll even tempt you to lie, Acts 5 3. And he will also try and persuade you to commit acts of sexual immorality. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 5. And you know what? That's only the beginning, friends. The danger is that believers who listen to the devil's voice, they will not only respond to his promptings, but he will gradually replace the voice of God in your life. And the consequences of that is that you live a self-centered self-righteous existence not christ-centered not christ righteousness self-centered and self-righteousness will creep in i know this is a little bit controversial but i'm going to say it anyway do you know that one of satan's ultimate aims is to produce religious people people who on the surface appear to be religious and to live a self-righteous life that's the best if you can tie someone up like that. People who appear to be putting their trust in him. Self-righteousness really serves Satan's purposes very, very well. As someone once said over a hundred years ago, a guy called Haddon Robinson, and I think this is a wonderful quote. As long as the evil one can lure us away from God, he doesn't care how well behaved we appear to be. As long as the evil one can lure you away from God, he doesn't care how well behaved you appear to be in the eyes of other people. It's a big one, isn't it? What's our response, friends? Well, we have one. Our defense. Paul says this in Ephesians 6. I'm going to read the whole section for you. Put on the whole armour of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armour of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of, breast of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always and with prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication and that's for all the saints for every one of us simply put this armor of god consists of all these wonderful gifts all these wonderful character traits all these aspects of truth that we can access and the truth of righteousness the gospel of peace and faith 
in our salvation and our ability to achieve it through Christ and Christ alone. But there are other weapons that are referred to here in our defence, like the Word of God and prayer. Don't miss those out. They're not all just character traits. There are things that we can go outside of ourselves and call upon God to help them with. And we have a very good example, because when Jesus himself was tempted by the devil, what did he do? He himself quoted scripture, Matthew 4. And when he was tempted not to do the will of God concerning the cross in the Garden of Gethsemane, he too prayed to the Father, just like we can. We can do the same, friends. When believers put on the armour and are armed with the word of God and with prayer, the devil will not gain a foothold in your life. That's the promise of the word. Be obedient to that. We come under constant attack from the devil. And this is how we resist it when it comes. We put on the armour of God. We use the word of God. And we pray to our Father God. And in doing so... We become spiritually mature. We are able to live this desire, this desired life of a life in the spirit. We are spiritually mature and becoming Christ-like. Okay, let's summarise what we've looked at this morning. The enemies of the spiritual life are number one, the flesh. That which disobeys God. The world which everything in it is opposed to and will stay opposed to God and the devil, the one who will wants to replace God and wants to replace God in your life. And the way to protect yourself against these adversities from the flesh is to be spiritually minded, to be protected from the world. We just simply need to live and walk according to the word and the spirit and from the devil, we need to make sure we put on the full armour of God. But you know, there's a way you can probably sum this up and cover all those things. In short, don't exclude God from any part of your life. Include God in everything you do, in all your decision making. Because you need to note that these three enemies, the flesh, the world and the devil, they will work together to attack you. James chapter 3 verse 15 tells us there is a singular, a singular personality from below that exists and utilises all these three things to try and bring you down. They all work together in opposition to the will of God in your life. They will conspire together against you. But the defence against all these things is quite simply to include the Lord in everything you do. To, conclude, to include him not just in all of your activities, but draw him in. Include him in all of your attitudes. Simply put, Include the Lord in everything you do. Live your life as unto the Lord. Live according to the word of God and in dependence upon the love of God in Christ and also according to the prompting of his Holy Spirit. And if you remember that, we are told, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let's pray for him to do that now, this day and every day.